Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Fullest Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Bostwick, and today's guest is Laurel Gallucci, who is a dear friend of mine. So I'm really excited to have you on the podcast, Laurel. She is the co founder of Sweet Laurel Bakery. She's the mother of two wonderful children, Nick, Nico, and Cal, and her husband, who we refer to as Mr. Sweet Laurel. Nick is just such a wonderful person and a big part of her life, of course, and the company. He's so helpful. And Laurel is also an author, and her second book is coming out early next year. So we're really excited to have her on and and learn more about her story. Thank you so much for having me, Nikki. (laughs) I love you so much and I love what you're doing and it's an honor to be here. Thank you. So I'm super excited because I know your story, but I I feel like I just always learn more about you and and I can't wait to share with everyone how we met and just (laughs) how full circle everything (laughs) is. But Yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if many people know, but you accidentally became this amazing entrepreneur, baker, and I think that's such an interesting story how it started. And I know before you were a school teacher, and I feel like I didn't know this until recently, but you were also a Pilates instructor. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, when did that yes. happen while you were a school teacher? Yes. So, um, I've always kind of had this ounce of like overachiever in me. Mm -hmm. And when I was a school teacher, I was, um, this was before I was sick, but I was obsessed with just staying fit and doing all sorts of things. And so even though I had a full-time job as a school teacher, I was also a Pilates instructor after school. Wow. And another little known fact about me is that I actually was the history chair of oh, the yeah. Santa Monica <laughs> Bay Women's Club. And I would put on like local history lectures about things going on in LA. And um, it was just so much fun. But it was this part of me where like, I just always had, I I was like an outlet extraordinary. Like if I wasn't teaching, I was like focusing on a hobby or learning how to do um, something. And so I think it's really interesting how sweet Laurel is like this complete full circle thing for me, where not only is it a creative outlet, but it's like a challenger outlet where like, there is literally never a dull moment and there's always something new I can learn and be challenged by and, um, grow in. So it's a huge blessing and it's really interesting to me how full circle it all is. So, who okay so how did it happen you uh while you were teaching Mm -hmm. you realized that you yeah were just not feeling well and you had no energy Mm -hmm. so and um, I know you became a private teacher so tell us when it like transitioned so after college I um went straight into graduate school and got my master's in education and um teaching credentials and I was credentialed to teach both primary and secondary. So elementary school, middle school, high school. And I started out teaching high school. I loved it. I taught locally at Venice High School and I had the opportunity to teach history and the after school cooking club. And when I was at Venice High School, I saw how um, disparaging or how like different food was for different demographics. So I was teaching at a school where like 60% of the student body was on free breakfast and lunch, coming to school for breakfast and lunch. And, um, in this cooking club, I learned, you know, a lot of what I know about food and I've learned just because I'm so privileged Mm -hmm. is that, you know, most kids like don't even know what certain vegetables are and they grow up eating at 7-Eleven. And that was like something I learned while teaching there. And I saw this. And it's somewhere that, you know, you grew up in Santa Monica. So it's literally right right down the street. It's like my community. And so, um, I was in shock and in the after school cooking club, I got to work with kids and, teach them how to use the garden that the school had where they grew all sorts of fruits and vegetables. And we would, um, make 
food after school. And it was so fun for me. I loved yeah. it. And that's always been like a part of me, I feel like. And then How I went old on, were the kids like with they were high school. The so. after school program was for high school. Okay. Yeah. So they were probably like 15 to 18. And I was literally, I think like 23 at the time. <laughs> and um, I was just like, I was, it was an interesting experience because teaching high school so young, I yeah. was literally afraid of the kids at first. Cause I was like, I'm sure. I was so nervous every day. It was like a lesson in public speaking every single day. And amazingly, all of the um, teaching I did early on, like paved the way for me as a speaker and an educator at Sweet Laurel mm -hmm. because like, I don't get nervous to talk to people anymore. Yeah. No matter <laughs> how I think famous. It was because I was like afraid of my high schoolers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they prepped you. Yeah. So anyways, <clears throat> I went on to teach elementary school. Um, and with those kids, I also did tons of cooking and baking, which was amazing. And um, at that time, were you still aware of organic and stuff like that. So yeah. you knew. Yeah. Yeah. So I grew up in a family where my dad is a cardiologist, always talked about how food affects your health. Mm -hmm. Always. My mom was a health nut. She didn't buy juice. She didn't buy cereal. She was like, we ate real food. Mm -hmm. And, um, my dad would literally, when I would bake for fun after school, he'd be like, Laurel, could you try making these cookies with olive oil? Wow. Because we don't eat butter. <laughs> and like he, like I would buy butter at the grocery store and make cookies and he like wouldn't eat them. Cause he's like, I don't eat butter. Wow. Because he was, um, he is like a very hardcore, um, cardiologist, yeah, obviously, but he also, um, for his own cholesterol levels, doesn't eat a ton of, um, saturated fat. So he, he like canola oil. Is so that he what doesn't was... eat, he doesn't eat like, um, a lot of animal based fats. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and that was just for personal, personal health. And he like, definitely is one of those, like, I practice what I preach while, um, being a cardiologist, but I love you know, that he asked you to replace it with olive oil because yeah. most recipes it's like vegetable oil exactly. and stuff. But he was like, no, no olive oil. Yeah. So we used olive oil and I would like experiment with things. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Cause like I was seeing like, Oh, when a recipe calls for vegetable oil, I don't need to use vegetable oil. Olive oil is the same thing. And so I would just like swap things out. And that experimentation really came out to play in a big way with Sweet Laurel. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to share with you about natural wine. And I've been learning more and more about it lately because we've been working with a company called Primal Wine. And I absolutely love what I've learned with working with them because they are really here to share with us the beautiful, natural aspect of what wine really was intended to be. And I learned from them that conventional wine actually uses lab-grown yeasts and synthetic antimicrobials and even aerate their wine using gas injection at times. And I knew from that moment that I did not want to put that in my body. And what I also love about natural wine is the fact that they take into account cultural and philosophical methods when it comes to bringing us this beverage that really has respect for the environment. And it takes us back to the area where the grapes are grown. So I've been really excited because I signed up for Primal Wines Wine Club, where they basically guide you along the way, they curate the natural wine, and you get to learn something new. So I wanted to share this with you guys because we've partnered with them and we're offering free shipping when you sign up for their wine club and it's a great way to do something for yourself or with a family member and really have some fun learning something new so take the time sign up and tell us what you think use code the fullest at checkout and go to their website primalwine.com so your parents definitely had a instilled big, it yeah, yeah. Yeah. And with the school, you had already kind of known mm -hmm. those types of things. Obviously, yeah. the way you grew up, you knew yeah. what vegetables were and yes. stuff like that. So, but yes. then 
you then I got sick. teaching high school, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was teaching um, at an elementary school and I got really slowly started to get sick. Went to my OB for like a routine appointment and he saw that I had a goiter and he was like, you have a goiter. Did you know this? And I was like, no, I had no idea. And so he's- Can you said, explain what a goiter is? It's when your thyroid is visibly inflamed. Okay, yeah. So- like your throat, Adam's wow. apple area. And so, um, how interesting that your OB noticed that. Yeah. Like he's a really good OB. Like he was like checking my blood levels and things yeah. like that. And I guess it was visible. I had no idea, mm -hmm. but for comparatively it was visible. Mm -hmm. And so he tested me for a few things and he saw that I had, um, Hashimoto's disease. And so immediately I went into being treated with um, synthetic hormones. And that was something where I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm like 25 and I have to be on medication for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Hearing that I had a chronic disease was like so terrifying mm -hmm. because I was this very healthy, active Pilates person. Instructor. Yeah. <laughs> always, always running on the beach or doing something. Mm -hmm. And to hear that I had a chronic disease, I was like, how, why, what? Mm -hmm. And I was so confused. And so immediately I just went into taking the synthetic hormones and, um, every year it just seemed to get worse until, um, about two years after my diagnosis, I literally was, at like my lowest, I had, um, lost like 40 pounds. Whoa. So I it was, was like a hi hyperactive situation or I don't even know, but my, well, actually I do know. So my body was not digesting any food. Mm. Well, it was digesting some stuff, but like, because my gut was so also mm -hmm. needing help, I wasn't properly nourished. Yeah. And so, um, I also had taken tons of antibiotics throughout high school, college timeframe, more like college timeframe. And I think that caught up to me mm -hmm. in my early twenties. And, um, so my gut needed complete overhaul and that was also acting up. So I had all these issues, no energy. I could not, you know, hike with my family. I walking upstairs was challenging for me. I would just get like winded really easily. I was so tired. And so after, um, a few months of just feeling super lousy and not normal, um, and being told by doctors, you know, you're not, you're, you know, you've been constipated for three weeks. Okay. Take Miralax <laughs> three times a day. And I was like, what is your dad sound say? right? So, um, my dad actually is the person who told me that I needed to seek help elsewhere because I was not getting better. Mm -hmm. I was getting worse mm -hmm. under my current medical setup. And so I, um, my dad told me, you know, you can't put your health off another year. Um, my husband was like, I want you to take a year off to heal. When did you meet Nick in between all this? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, before actually getting diagnosed, we had already been married and I think I got diagnosed like right around the time we he got was, married. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, so I took a year off of teaching school and started working with an integrative, uh, medical doctor. So she was like the best of both worlds to me. And she was the one who like took one look at me and she was like, you have Hashimoto's disease what did you have for breakfast? <laughs> and I was like, I had sprouted Ezekiel four, nine bread and peanut butter. And she was like, okay. That's not <laughs> She's like, work you can't here. eat any of that. <laughs> so first of all, no gluten, no soy, no legumes. You just had all three of those to start your day. And I was like, I eat that every morning. And she was like, that's why you feel like crap. <laughs> <laughs> and so immediately she challenged me overnight to switched to a completely grain-free, refined sugar-free and dairy-free diet, also legume-free. Overnight. So I just <laughs> took out soy, I took out beans. And um, like I previously mentioned, I ate very healthy. It was just like inflammatory for my condition. Yeah. And I am not, I'm always the first to say like, what's inflammatory for me is not necessarily inflammatory for you I totally with agree. Hashimoto's disease and my 
gut being super messed up, a completely grain-free, refined sugar-free, dairy-free, legume-free diet is what I needed. Mm -hmm. I needed the anti-inflammatory approach. And so overnight, I switched my diet. I started focusing on gut health. I did a very intense protocol with re-inoculating the gut with good bacteria, with rebuilding the gut lining, with things like bone broth and different supplements. And um, after, you know, a few months, I started to feel a lot better energy wise. Mm -hmm. But I also realized like, I can't really eat anything. I had to make all my own food. And so that's when I started experimenting again. And instead of, um, you know, making cookies with whole wheat flour, I exchanged it with a nut based flour, like almond flour. And, um, I started just baking things that I could eat. And so I didn't have to miss out because <laughs> I'm like, I actually have a sweet tooth. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting because a lot of people could say I got sick and I started baking things, but like you have this magic touch and You're nothing so tastes like your stuff. <laughs> like I mean, nothing. You're so I mean, sweet. look at how many companies are trying to compete in this space right now. And there's nothing that tastes like sweet laurel. If you're like me and you experience painful periods, you're not alone. 80% of women experience painful periods in their lifetime, and yet there are so few solutions available. That's why Semaine Health created a plant-based anti-inflammatory supplement for the week of your period. Think of it like a natural mydol that's gluten, dairy, and soy-free and 100% vegan. Nine plant extracts and minerals, including ashwagandha, curcumin, and magnesium, work together to lessen pain, bloating, and fatigue the week of your period. Semaine is offering 25% off your first bottle of Semaine supplements with the code THEFULLEST25 to experience better periods. Because periods are normal, pain shouldn't be. I have been super blessed. Like the approach I started with, I was very um, very clear and like, um, intentional about having a short ingredients list mm -hmm. and the harmony of our ingredients working together. It's a really beautiful thing. And, um, once I came up with like one cookie recipe and one cake recipe, it was very easy to like, just kind of build upon that. And, what I like to tell people when they come to me and they say like, how come I can eat a whole slice of your cake, feel amazing after and yeah. want, actually want more. Yeah. And I tell them it's because it's real food, real food. Um, you, your body knows what it is. It can digest it. It doesn't just sit there and cause inflammation and brain fog and things like that. It's real food. It's nourishing food. It actually has like very great amounts of like protein and good fats in it. So you feel satiate, satiated afterwards. And um, I think that that plays a huge role in that but feel also, good factor. Oh, there are <laughs> so many paleo companies. I would say that like the food feels so dense and, but your food is like fluffy and moist. And you're so sweet. That also I think is well, a big part of yeah. why you can eat like a whole, you know, so box that's, of cookies. that's also where my partner at Sweet Laurel Claire comes in because she is like a food purist, amazing, um, creator, chef extraordinaire. And she tasted a cake I made her and literally was like, this isn't like the other. Mm -hmm gluten-free bakeries at the time it was really only gluten-free yeah. bakeries and she knew it was special by the taste and flavor and like she knew it didn't compromise on flavor and that's why she inspired me to take it to the next level because she was like you have something special here let's I'm I'm gonna help you out with branding and vision and let's just like take this and go with it because there's nothing that tastes like this. And this was in 2015. Yeah. So it was five years ago, almost six. And um, we, I'm so glad that she had that vision because I was very much so like, what are you talking about? I'm taking a year off. I'm doing yoga every day. I actually <laughs> really like not working. <laughs> yeah. You're like, wait, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and, and she was like, no, 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 no. 
we're starting a bakery. She's like, this is really special. And, and I have such a business minded oh, person yeah. no, that you like can't say no. <laughs> yeah. And she had the brand vision too. Yeah. And she was just like, she knew my, we had been friends for a while before and she knew like my, um, whole ideology with like, you know, vintage things and flowers yeah. and like, she like understood hanging out with 80 year olds yeah. she, she like understood who I was Aww. and she wanted to make sure those things that those those good attributes were shared with people <laughs> inside Sweet Laurel so we we launched Sweet Laurel together in 2015 as an online business we um I was actually a cottage lab business when we first started so everything that we sold was delivered, hand delivered throughout Los Angeles, made in my home kitchen that was Cottage Law certified through the health department. And that lasted us about a year. And we outgrew that and moved into a commercial kitchen and launched our wholesale. And, um, you know, the rest is history. It's kind of been a very interesting saga. And it all started with, you know, that my healing through made. food story yeah. and bringing a completely grain-free, dairy-free, refined sugar-free cake to my friend who was like, this is really special. So I found out about Sweet Laurel. <laughs> yes. I got engaged. How did you find out about Sweet Laurel? Online. Like, I don't know. I was on Instagram. And okay. some, I don't know how I found out about it because obviously it, it was, was like probably so new. like, cause you hit me up so early on our main press moments at that time were like goop and the chalkboard magazine. Yeah. And yeah, I think like it was that. chalkboard Mac. Okay. And I, you know, I had just gotten engaged to mm -hmm. Eric and I was like, who's going to make my wedding cake? And I found Laurel and sweet Laurel and I emailed in and I was like, what is going on? This company has this like big press moment, but I can't order anything on their <laughs> website. Like what is going on? I'm, I was like just super adamant about yes. meeting you. And then, um, I connected with you and you were like, do you want to meet up at a chocolate store <laughs> down the street from my house? And I was like, okay. And Laurel and I met at Choco Vivo yes. in, is it Mar so Vista? Good. Culver City. Yeah. In Culver City. And like, that's where we connected. I was like, you need to make my cake. But that's why we met in person. Cause you were like, I probably need to explain like, to this I, person. Yeah. I was like, yeah. so first of all, you hit me up. Like, I want to say three months into sweet Laurel. And literally when you asked me to make your wedding cake, I was like, so when's your wedding? You were like in a year. I was like, <laughs> I had no idea if we were going to be doing this in a year, I was like, is I, when we first started, I, we weren't necessarily like even selling stuff at the time. It was more about, um, you know, sharing just the healing through food journey and the recipes and things like that. And so, um, that was kind of before we started with all of our cake. Yeah operation things and so it was really fun getting to work on your wedding project your wedding was definitely one of our first weddings yeah. and um so it was fun. like a beautiful affair but we and made Laurel lots of came with her husband yes. Nick and it was so fun of what I just I loved meeting you because then I shared my food story with mm -hmm. you and you were just so supportive yes. and reached out and yes. asked how I was doing yes. and said you wanted to help me and so you know, our friendship was formed. And yes. It was so special. It's and been a special journey with yeah, you. Yeah. And then Laurel got pregnant mm -hmm. at basically around <laughs> the time at my wedding, essentially. Laurel yes, got pregnant. It's true. So, yeah, I, it, that's like a kind of a facet of my healing through food journey that I also would love to share is that like I was so sick that I was not ovulating. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons why. Um, I really knew I needed help is that, you know, I stopped having a period. I did not have a period for four years. And wow. as a woman, it's just a really weird feeling to not be ovulating and cycling. And I was just, I felt it was one of the reasons why I felt so lousy, you know, cause I, I had 
you know, all these energy issues associated with the lack of hormones. And, um, that was when you found out you had Hashimoto's like right around that time. You no, stopped this getting- was one of the side effects that kind of sprung itself on me about two years into the diagnosis oh, when I started kind of losing all my energy and noticing. Cause I, I think that the, the Hashimoto's disease is, it can be in remission and then it can like be like a slow, creeping disease slowly wearing at you. Um, and for me, what happened was it was like kind of normal at first and then it just really flared up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you got pregnant. Yeah. I ended up getting pregnant with Nico, um, without having a period, without taking hormones or anything. I didn't realize without having a period. That's he's a miracle insane. baby that's why i think he looks like a little angel sweetheart yeah, baby really, it does <laughs> oh my gosh wait okay so you got pregnant and then you well you went off your medic okay i want to talk about the medication part yeah. and i want to ask you about like other health things like birth control mm-hmm. too did you ever take birth control so i took birth control for about two years Um, when you, and when I was sick and when I, when I flared up, like when I mentioned, I like lost all my energy and everything. I was like, I'm just going to stop taking birth control because maybe this is making me feel sick. Yeah. So I stopped taking it. And that's when I noticed I wasn't having a period. Oh, And I was like, wow, I'm like not working at all. Yeah. (laughs) And when I talked to my OB about it, they encouraged me to go back on birth control. And I was like, but that's a fake period. Yeah, exactly. I want to have a real one. Yeah. Um, and so that was one it. of the reasons why I, I always had it in me to kind of do things more naturally. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, this isn't right. And so the birth control could have been a factor 100%. I tell everyone not to take it and try to yeah. use other methods because I truly feel that it really messes with your hormones a little too much. And I just know that certain people, they're totally fine with it. They can get pregnant, pregnant, no problem after it. But, um, it's still I messing it, with you. It messes with yeah. you. Yeah. And I think that it's interesting because it's seen as a really big deal in women's rights. Yeah. And I think that the pill shouldn't necessarily be associated with that. I think like you're saying methods, different methods. Yeah. yeah there's so women many other things you can do yeah. to take their To learn and, about your yeah, body, exactly. to learn how it all works. It's, it's, it's so incredible. And like, if you're cycling normally, I'm not going to tell you it's easy to do it naturally, yeah. but if you can tune into your body and you know, when you're ovulating and you're intentional, it's totally possible to practice methods of birth control without using mm-hmm. pills or IUDs or anything like you just kind of have to tune in and, you know, clock yeah. out your cycle. There's and there's an, so many great apps for that now. So many. And yeah. there's a new documentary out by the Ricky Lake. I don't know if you've heard yes. of it called the business of birth control. I lo- Okay. So she did the business of being born yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. She's amazing. I know. She, I didn't know she made another one. Yeah. So they, she just did it with this woman, Holly Griggs ball, who okay. wrote the book, sweetening the pill. And it's so crazy how controversial it is to say, Hey, there's an, there are other ways I know. you don't have to take this hormone pill. Yeah. And so I think it's like really yeah. important to share our stories yeah. because I think people don't, yeah. Uh, sometimes you don't equate like your symptoms with totally. that situation. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it was really interesting because after I had Nico, you know, I was two years into like a bustling growing business mm-hmm. and I was faced with like the whole thing of like, so what do I do now? Because I cannot have a baby back to back with what's going on at Sweet Laurel. Yeah. I'm very busy. Um, and I want to like, really focus on Nico when I am home and all that stuff. So it was interesting because when I weaned Nico and stopped breastfeeding, 
I started cycling like clockwork normally again. And keep in mind, I hadn't had a normal cycle yeah. since like high school. Yeah. Like this is, this is like unheard of for me. And so I'm just cycling normally. And so, um, and you're but also have you this went to remission, right? Yeah. yeah. So at the same time I stopped taking my Synthroid, which was the synthetic hormone I was on for my thyroid. And were you um, on it during your pregnancy and after? Her? Okay. I was on it in moderate amounts. Okay. Yeah. They were really monitoring me. Cause mm-hmm. like when you're pregnant, it's really important that those levels stay well. Mm-hmm. And, um, so my, I worked with my functional nutritionist, Margaret Floyd Berry to get weaned off my thyroid hormones. She, she's done it before with herself and with clients. So like I felt comfortable working with her on this. Yeah. So I weaned myself off of it with her help. And I don't recommend doing it unless you're working with a practitioner Mm -hmm. because you need to be monitored. Yeah. And um, she supported me like supplementally and all that fun stuff. And my period came back like clockwork. And I was um, open. We were opening Sweet Laurel Cake Coffee and Tea at the time. And I was kind of like, and our cookbook was coming out. And I was like, (laughs) I can't have another baby right now. And so I actually started practicing the fertility awareness method, Mm -hmm. which is, it's an acronym for FAM. It's FAM. And it's one of these natural birth control methods where you literally clock your cycle. I was using an app to log when I was fertile. And I have to say it worked so well for me. And when I decided I was ready and Nick decided we were ready to move on to number two. I um, used my tracker, my cycle tracker. We got pregnant within a month. And That's you know amazing. this, Nikki, because I told you I was ready. Yeah. And then, and it happened. And then like, you were like, pregnant. wait, are you pregnant? And I was like, I might be. And then I found out like a few weeks later. <laughs> and like, honestly, um, I know that I have like a success story using fertility awareness method. It might not work for everyone, but like, I tracked my cycle and it worked so well. Um, and I, really you know, think, I think it can work. I, I really so do. Too. I think the only time, because that's what worked for me when I got pregnant with mm-hmm. truth. And I think the only time it's challenging for people is obviously when they don't have a cycle. Like that's yes. when it can become and, challenging. And that's what I had before. Yeah, exactly. And you had that. So it's just, it's interesting. Yeah. But that's, I, that is, that is really tough. If you can't track it, I don't know how you would do it. I but, know it's yeah. hard, but I think your body is just basically telling you like, give me some time, you know, I yeah. you just, because it could be because of the birth control. It could be because of so many reasons why you yeah. aren't having Diet a cycle. too. Yeah, exactly. Stress is huge. But, um, yeah. So Laurel had Nico and became a mom. And yep. I felt like, you know, Eric and I had just gotten married. So I always look up to you. I feel like you're like one step ahead. Oh, at all you're times, so, yeah. Right? Cause so now like, I have two kids. Yeah. Now, now you have two like, kids hmm. and I'm like, okay, what's that like? So I always look to Laurel as so sweet. just a friend to ask all my questions, all my mom questions and everything. But I love that aspect of sweet Laurel bakery. And I think it's, super unique mm-hmm. that you guys do that. And I, I'm excited to see that grow and expand. Cause I know you do it on live, yeah. um, on Instagram live Love and you do it, yeah. like, do you do zoom versions or mm-hmm. is it always on Instagram? So with COVID I started doing zoom classes yeah, I and I like that. it so much more anyways, because you have your it's kitchen. Just, it's quick. Yeah. I'm in my kitchen. Like the people are in the comfort of their home. There's like, you know, it's, I like how informal it is. Mm-hmm. That's actually really nice because people open up and they tell me like their whole life story. And, you know, I can make things catered for their needs and their family's needs. We can, Oh, you I do like custom classes. Oh yeah. Too. Like if someone's <gasps> allergic to, so if someone, you know, has to eat grain free, refined sugar free and dairy free, but they're allergic to coconut or whatever, I can like change Modify the recipes it. and help That's them. That's really cool. Yeah. I was thinking like, more like pu- public facing, like larger group classes as well. Yeah. So you're doing private and doing group classes. I'm doing private and large ones, yeah. And I know eventually you're interested in like expanding into, you know, an Videos actual like or video, yeah. yeah, which is going to be super cool. I would love to do like, like a TV show or something one day. I, think I know. Be really Remember? Fun. 
I feel like I've always thought about you doing one. Like you need like a reality oh, show with Nick or something too. Oh, I would 100% <laughs> love to do that. Um, I Someone. think like right now I'm kind of in the weeds with Sweet Laurel, like just trying to really focus on like growing and all that fun stuff. And, you know, one day I feel like I will have more time to really focus on the creative outlet side of it. That's really fun. Yeah. Which, um, has such a strong potential to educate and inspire so many people. Mm -hmm. So when you had Nico, yeah. you, I remember like you stayed home yeah. and like your family would come help you. You would hold him and do, they would do your emails. <laughs> yes. And I, I would, just like yeah. totally remember that oh, time period. Yeah. And obviously things are just like so crazy and so different now. Yeah. And my question to you is like on the outside because we haven't be, because of COVID like we haven't hung out as much as mm -hmm. we normally would so I haven't spent as much time with Cal as I probably did with Nico mm -hmm. when he was Cal's age mm -hmm. um and I guess I'm wondering like on the outside it looks like as a mom you've created a way to have more boundaries so that you have your time to have some yeah. self-care yeah and do you think that that came more easily to you with a second kid, even though it's probably more difficult totally. to have that time yeah. than it did with your first one? Yeah. So with Nico, when I had Nico, I literally thought that I could work full time yeah. and watch my child. Yeah. Which is totally which what is I Which is so hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked for about three or four months. Like when they're really little, mm -hmm. you can totally do both. Yeah. But when they're older and crawling and active and like getting into standing up and yeah. in like the dangerous phase, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to, you need help. And so, um, I came to terms with the fact that I needed a full-time nanny and that that was okay. Yeah. And that during those hours where I'm working, that's my focus working time. And then when I'm home, I'm home and I get to be with my babies and, um, Working from home right now is really interesting during COVID because my kids are obviously home and I'm home. So yeah. we're in the same house and that is very hard for my kids because yeah. they see me and they hear me. Yeah. <laughs> and we're at Laurel's house recording yeah. right now. And Nico just peeked his head <laughs> in and then grunted yeah. because he saw that I was working and he was like, I can't, I can't bother her. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I work in my office, you know. They come in my office all the time to talk to me, um, but we we try to create the boundary of like when mommy's working, she's working. Is and your nanny taking care of both of them right yeah. now then? That yeah. Way, yeah. Yeah. And she's amazing. And what I love about the stage I'm in right now is that she can bring Cal to me when he needs to nurse, which mm -hmm. is so nice that I don't have to pump as much. I only pump when I leave. So like yeah. I'm still doing kitchen visits and, you know, a couple meetings that are more on the in-person side. And like, you know, I need to pump for those types of things. But for the majority, I've been able to breastfeed him every three hours, which is really nice. That's so nice. And so when do you take the time to you know, work out or whatever yeah. it is that you want to do for yourself. Yeah. Like, do you do that normally in the morning? Yeah. So what I try to do is like once or twice a week, dedicated 30 minutes workout, mm -hmm. whether it's, um, what I've loved doing is plate fit. Yeah. And right now they're doing plate fit at home. So a trainer comes to my house and we work out for 27 minutes in our masks and it's great. Yeah. And because like, 27 minutes is such a good time frame I know, for me. exactly. And then um, Nick and I, during like lunch breaks, will like go out and do a quick walk or something. But um, for me, that's really fueling, mm -hmm. just getting that personal time in. And for someone who like was so active and then couldn't move, and then now I can move again because I have the energy, it's like the best. Yeah. It feels so good to like do something, you know? So, um, before we go, I just want to kind of, I know there's so much going on at Sweet Laurel right now, mm -hmm. and there are so many fun, exciting things that are just percolating and going to yes. pop up really soon. So will mm -hmm. you kind of give us a rundown? So people who, you know, maybe they've never been to your cake shop yeah. or 
gone on yeah um to like learn more about yeah. the bakery i want them to yeah. know that totally. pretty soon they're probably gonna come into contact in a different totally. way yeah so the best way to stay in contact with what we're doing is to follow us on instagram at sweet laurel bakery and um we've we've created a really fun thriving community there and it's a it's just an amazing thing for our brand to be able to connect with people and we do a lot of our education platforming on there like with the lives and things like that and um we have some really exciting news in terms of getting our products to more people in terms of um larger retailers and wholesale accounts for our uh, products, which is really awesome. Um, coming out in, um, late 2020 and early 2021. And, um, every single product that we sell ships nationally, which you can find at sweetlaurel.com. And if you're in LA, we have a cake shop in Pacific Palisades where you should, you can get a superfood latte and a slice of grain free cake. And it's pretty fabulous. It's amazing. Right now, our most popular um, baked goods are our keto items, and those all ship nationally. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a really amazing journey. And um, I also should mention that the second Sweet Laurel Cookbook is coming out in February 2021, which Can is really exciting. Can they pre-order it right now? It is actually available for pre-order. <gasps> okay, yes. exciting. We'll share the Google link Google Sweet Laurel Savory. Yeah, and then... Um, we have our first cookbook, which has gotten so much more popular during quarantine. Oh, how funny. I mean, it makes sense. It sold out like eight times. Wow. Like it was, it's it like literally more people are baking and I feel like the cookbook followers quadrupled or something. Well, it makes sense. I mean, especially if, you know, you want to stay healthy during a time yeah. like this, but you still want something sweet. It's the perfect oh, combination. Yeah. yeah. And our recipes are designed to, if you have these five core ingredients mm -hmm. in your pantry, you can make any recipe in the book. And so I, I love tell that people you to just stock their pantry. <laughs> that it's not only like the five ingredient thing is amazing, but also like, I know that your recipes say dry and wet, but yeah. I love that in person you always say, you can still throw them all in and like mix it and it's going to work. And your two-year-old can mix it. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> like, yeah, it doesn't Truth matter. loves making yeah. your cookies and Aww, we love baking baby. together at home. Yeah. So uh, my top favorite baked goods from Laurel are her chocolate chip cookies and her, um, what do you call the chocolate cake? Which one? The one with caramel? The one with a caramel. Chocolate caramel cake. Chocolate caramel cake. It's my absolute favorite. But I also love the um, jam cake, too. Yeah. You guys are total jam cakers. Yeah. For your wedding, we made jam cake and I chocolate know. caramel cake. I know. And there's carrot cake, too. Yeah, there was. Yeah, those were like all three of our skews. You wanted your guests to have variety. Mm -hmm. I know. It was so special. Yeah. Well, thanks so yes, much for this coming was so on fun. the podcast. Yeah. I love you so much. You, too. I'm so happy that I get to call you my friend Aww, and I feel so likewise. blessed to have you in my life and I'm just happy to be able to share your story I think it's so inspiring and everyone should follow you on Instagram Aww. because you always just have the best things to say <laughs> and the best recommendations too for just Thank like an all-around holistic natural lifestyle so yes I love you oh love you too you. Thank you. Thank you.